It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Private Brewery Hoz and it's a bottle of their Holza beer coming in at 5.2% ABV. Lots of little snippets of information on the back of the bottle I will get to in a moment. But first of all, we're just going to get it out into a glass, see what we get. I'm just going to cut this because I love the, the pop that these beers make. Whoa, nice bit of smoke on the bottle opening, beer in the glass then. What I tend to do is hold that there with a finger. It took me a long time to work out. Then get the pinky out because I want to show the label and then pour. It's a, it's quite a, it's almost like playing the guitar, pouring beers for YouTube. Because you're getting all your fingers and your thumbs out of the way. And not letting metal kind of bottle tops swing round and and go in your beer. Methods to madness, yeah, some people say. Um, ooh, look at the carbonation. I think oh, I've used this glass before and I wish I never. Um, four finger. Slightly off white head. Um, I like the shape of the glass. It's really good for this style of beer. I just wish they didn't put the widget in the bottom, the number 13 look. Never mind, I'm sure it's... What it just means is it's going to knock the carbonation very quickly. So we'll get on with reviewing the beer. But what it does do, I suppose, is, is just to, to self-explain these kind of German bottle-conditioned beers. It may not be bottle-conditioned. It may be, we'll find out in a moment. But unfiltered, little particles floating around in the glass. It just proves to you that you do not need to force carbonate your beer. You can do so in the natural way of, of, of bottle conditioning. Um, so yeah, we have an amber beer in the glass, two to three finger, slightly off white head. Thank you very much to Stephen in Germany for sending us a beer. What a fantastic parcel again. We're down to our last two. We're flying through these beers at the moment. Let's get on with the aroma. Yeah, it smells really good, kind of more of a nutty, biscuity, bready. Nutty, biscuity, bready, kind of cereal, brown cereals. Muesli type of thing. Let's dive in, cheers. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh. That is so good. I gotta put that down. That is such a good beer. My goodness me, stone the crows. Stone the crows, just immense, 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 immense. Um, it's just really bready. It's really bready, like a, like the crust of of the very best wholemeal bread with nuts in it. You know, that that special bread you might pay a few more pence for that has got nuts and kind of oats and all sorts of stuff on it. Bits, as my kids say. Oh, just fantastic. That slightly, and, and, and just on top of that, I can give a fully, fully kind of, a full explanation of this beer now. When you buy this bread, you picked up, and I do this, I look for the darkest loaf, the one that's slightly burnt crust on it and that's exactly that is exactly what I'm tasting in this beer that that nutty brown wholemeal bread that's slightly burnt on the crust carbonation pushes the beer on the inside of the mouth releases more of that flavour it's sweet to begin with, hoppy and bitter on the back end. You're getting that kind of classic German stinging nettle kind of 
hop flavour, it's slightly peppery as well. There is so much going on. So much going on with this beer. It, it's just an absolute... Here we go again with the, with the holding down of the, the neck and moving all the fingers out of the way. I'm not looking so much like a ponce this time, I've just tucked them behind. So let's have a look if indeed the beer was, it's definitely unfiltered, you can see a slight haze in there. Bit of a shame with the the widget in the glass, but there's an upside to it, there's definitely an upside. If you like to like clear some of the carbonation out of the beer, this is the best way to do it with a widget in the bottom of the glass. If you like your beer slightly flatter, if you like some of that carbonation to disperse out of the glass quickly, then by all means use a widget. It just means you're getting more of that flavour, but you can drink it quicker, if that makes sense. So although it was a mistake on my part to use a beer, to use a glass with a widget in the bottom for such a wonderful beer, there is an upside. There is an upside, and that is you've cleared some of that that gassiness, that carbonation that you can you can really kind of pummel this beer down now. Hmm. I don't think I give the ABV. Good job you're still watching. If you've made it this far into the video, it's 5.2% ABV. I've probably got about 30 comments by now for the people who come and dash away again very quickly going, what was the ABV? Stay and find out, my friends. Stay and find out. It's really good. It's just really good, easy drinking, bready, biscuity. Wonderful, wonderful brew. I'm totally happy. Look at the lacing on the glass. Just absolutely terrific. I found my mojo again with beer. I've really found my mojo. Um, I've mentioned this in the previous video only just the other day. But I'm bringing it up again because I think it's very important. I lost a little bit of my mojo for beer. Um, back in 2019. Um... I did a lot of food. I still will do a lot of food because the, the, the channel dictates that. The, the, the viewership is there with the food. But I've started to lose the, you know that initial excitement? You know when you first learn to ride a bike and then it's great for a few weeks and then, and then it just becomes normal? That, that happened me with, with me with the food. I was uploading videos of the, of the food reviews at about 10.30, 11 o'clock every day. Uh, the views were going fantastic. Really good. Found an extra gear in the channel. Everything was going marvellous. It still is going marvellous. Uh, and, then, and then towards the end of 2019, I had a little bit of fatigue with with just trying to find all the new foods that were coming out and making videos and all the cooking, all the cooking involved in in producing these video. I've, I've had a touch of fatigue with it all. I still enjoy it, but my, I've had a second wind with the beer. The fact that I can just grab a beer on the back wall, press record with my glass and pour it out and start talking about it speaks magnitudes about about the ability for, for for us to have been able to produce I looked the other day we're on 5,500 uploads and of that I reckon it was 365 days in a year so I did one food review a day um, and that's being generous so so we've definitely definitely drank 5,300 beers easily. And I think that's, the, that's what speaks magnitude, is the fact that we've been able to do that because it's just glass, beer, bottle opener there, press record, off we go. 
and it's just the simplicity of it all. And I, I, I've been watching um, some YouTube videos about YouTube fatigue. So I was looking at the fatigue in terms of other people suffering with it, uh, constantly uploading videos. And I don't, I'm not doing this for any um, sympathy whatsoever. I'm not talking about this for, for, for any kind of sympathy. I'm talking about this because um, I, I mean, I mean, I've I've spent my life, early parts of my life. One of the worst jobs I ever did was was I was on the pine end of a house on the top top floor on the outside on scaffolding. Um, we had a bloke down below mixing cement, and all day long, I was pulling cement up on buckets. And I was about twenty twenty one. 22 so about 18 years ago this happened it was the year when I first bought my house I needed the money um, it was my trade anyway I thought this was life and it is life for many people so pulling pulling the buckets on rope tying off a bucket of cement and pulling it up to the to the top of a house and then passing it to the to the plasterer to render the pine end of a house was a killer. I've never been so tired. We worked our way down on the scaffold to the bottom and by the time we got to the bottom rung, which was just a case of pulling the bucket up once, twice, grab it, pass it to the plasterer, it was just as hard as when I was doing it at the top because I just used all my energy and I had nothing left. At the end of the day, I got home, I was just laying in the bath, just I couldn't move. I couldn't even wash myself. So I'm not looking for any sympathy when it comes to me because it's very simple for me to to be able to bung a pizza in the oven or or pop to McDonald's or whatever or, or, or whatever else with the food um, or knock some noodles up. It's just that extra that extra little bit of effort on a daily basis that that makes a makes a massive difference to 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 for yeah youtube fatigue so i've been watching it and all of the top youtubers of youtube have been suffering with with youtube fatigue where where they have a break from youtube i don't think i will ever 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 have a break because i spent as i mentioned before i spent 20 years working hard on building sites and and this doing this now is quite frankly, still easy. There's a difference in becoming fatigued on a building site and, 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 a, very, and a difference becoming fatigued on, on here making videos on YouTube. There's no difference. I think it's more mental. I think where I was physically fatigued on a building site, I could just go to bed and forget about coming from work and just forget about everything. I think the fatigue, the mental fatigue that comes into it on YouTube is is where you're having to think about what you're going to buy, think about what you're going to film, think about what you're going to say, then film, then edit, then upload to YouTube, then release it on Facebook and Twitter and whatever platform you're on, Instagram and whatever, and then hope that people will tune in and watch. That's the, it's much more of a mental thing. So I spend my nights, even when I lay down and put my head on the pillow, I'm laying there thinking, what am I doing tomorrow? So it's the mental fatigue of, of if you're doing this seven days a week, is not being able to switch off but it's still a lot easier, I would say, than, than pulling a bucket of cement off the, on, the, on the side of a, a terrace house, rendering a, a terrace house. So, I'm gonna rate the beer. I've gone on a bit now, haven't I? I really have gone on, it's five to 10. Been talking for God knows how long in this video. Um, I don't even know how we got there. I'm thinking back to this beer now, how wonderful this beer is. And I don't even know how we got there. <laughs> I 
But that's right here. Ooh. I wanted to say, it's some information on the back of the bottle. Uh, Holes of beer, water, German malts and hops, um, half litre bottle, 5.2% ABV. I remember now, it's a bearish beer. I remember now, I was talking about getting my mojo back with beer. That was exactly where we went with this whole thing. <coughs> and yeah, it, if you've made it right to the end of this video, um, thank you very much for staying right to the end. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, it's it's drinking great beer, and and the simplicity of making the videos that has got my mojo back for beer. That's the answer. Rating. Holes of beer by Private Brewery Hoss. Terrific stuff. I like it enough to give it a... I love it. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 for Real Ale Craft Beer. The smile is back. The smile is back. 10 out of 10. Stow the crows. Put your comments in the comments box. Please subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Hit that not notification bell for, for notifications on our new uploads. Cheers.